my name is Emma. I'm six foot. I'm 20 years old. I'm an Aquarius and I'm obsessed with cookie dough, which is perfect for the current situation. Wait. So excited. When I was younger, honest to God, used to fancy a snack and I would genuinely just get a bowl, make cookie dough and just eat it raw. But now that I can actually have a, I was about to say a healthy version, I mean it's not healthy, it's just not poisonous. It's not bad for your body. So I thought, why not do a Q&A whilst eating cookie dough? This sounds perfect. Don't know about you. I would want to be me right now. How convenient I am. And now the time has finally come. I can't wait. So let's get into this box and see what gorgeousness I have got. Oh my God, I was about to say it would be great if I had a spoon. I'm just amazing, aren't I really? You know why I've got that? Because I've genuinely just been eating hot chocolate from the thing. Welcome to Quarantine Emma. It isn't like hot chocolate powder though, this is cookie crumbs. I got this from France, I'm obsessed with it now. On to other unhealthy things. It are sprinkles, look at it, it's so cute. <laughs> Try not to die before going to Germany, that'd be handy, wouldn't it? <laughs> you have a cute little bag, a thank you card. You're so welcome. Oh, it's a chilled packet. This has not been in the fridge for days. Have I messed up? I've messed up, haven't I? Mm, I don't mind, I don't mind. Oh, that chill packet's gone all yucky. I'm gonna roll with it because that is my bad. That is not their fault. I bet it says it on the box somewhere. I'm sure of it. Refrigerate a... Yep, didn't read that, did I? The one thing that is a shame is that there's liquid, but that's the chill pack and it's not on the inside of the cookie dough. So we have no problem. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah, oh, much better. We have red velvet funfetti cake batter. Oh, that sounds so good. Gooey chocolate chip. Triple chocolate fun. Oh, you can bake it too. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> Oh yes. Oh, look at it. Oh. I'm so happy. Ooh. Is red velvet just chocolate but colored red? Cause it tastes nice. Last but not least. Mmm. Oh, I'm not even mad that it's not been in the fridge. I love it, this texture. Mum's gonna end up calling me down for dinner and I'm just not gonna be able to eat any of it because I'm gonna have eaten all of this, which I love. The first question is how did I get the animator job? So I'm a language student. I study French, Spanish and German at Lancaster Uni and it's my year abroad this year. I'm only allowed to go to two different places. So I've got six months in Germany and four months in Peru. I thought, oh my God, I don't wanna come into fourth year after all my year abroad and be great at German and Spanish and not have practiced French for a whole year. So I thought I'm gonna try and find a summer job. I've wanted to do this for years, ever since I was a little, kid and I would go on holiday and see all the animators I always knew at some point I would just love to try it I'm obsessed with fitness I love kids I wanted to improve my friends so it seemed like such a fabulous idea and I just had a bit of research and I came across European leisure jobs and they're also linked with Vacances Soleil I literally just messaged them there's a very easy online application I ended up having an interview in English and an interview in French then I got the job. You have options for campsites. They recommended the place where I went to and I took it up and just had the best two months ever. I also had an extra two months of fitness, of practicing my French and also it was perfect timing because obviously, I mean, it's been a weird summer with all of the coronavirus stuff happening. Whilst lots of people were unfortunately stuck not being able to go anywhere. I was living in France, working, living on holiday, doing fitness. 
it was great i'm so happy i got the chance to go it was kind of stressful at the beginning though because this was sort of a peak coronavirus time in england so i wasn't even sure if i'd be allowed to go to france we weren't sure what the conditions were going to be like when i got to france i was told three days before my starting date that I could actually go. So then I had three days to properly sort stuff out to try and book tickets. There were no flights available. So I had to spend like nine hours traveling on the train, wearing a mask, but I got there and boy, was it worth it. <laughs> How was speaking French there? So it could have been so much harder. I was really lucky because when I got there, it was a small campsite. So I was only working with two other animators, Lara and Malou. Malou was Dutch, Lara was French. Malou was there for the Dutch and for the English and her English is incredible. Lara's English is incredible. So our general talking language day to day was English, which was actually great for me. We just got so much closer than what it would have been if I was attempting to speak French because my French is okay, but it's nowhere near as good as my English. Hmm. Even though I wasn't speaking French with Milou and with Lara, I was always speaking French during my fitness sessions at the mini club with all the kids. I mean, there were lots of Dutch kids as well, so a lot of it was just actions and noises, but we got through. <laughs> I've definitely improved my French. I've got quicker at speaking. I think my accent is slightly better. Every evening I'd be on stage with the microphone speaking French, things like I would lead the bingo and I'd explain all the rules in French. So. I was definitely getting my fair share of practice. Every Friday I'd do a two and a half hour walk with French and Dutch people. So I obviously had to speak French with the French people. And luckily, basically all Dutch adults speak English. So I was lucky enough to have Lara's stepmom who took us shopping most weeks and welcomed me at her house. So I properly spoke French or attempted to at least with Lara's family. So that was really nice and I think I've definitely got so much more confident in French now. I even came home and there was a lovely dog there called Fov and I got so used to using all the terminology that all the others were using there like instead of come, viens or instead of sit, assis and when I saw my dog for the first time at home I went viens and all my family looked at me and they were like did you just speak French? Oops. <laughs> so the fact that that came so naturally to me shows that you know, I was in French mindset. Because we'd also have staff parties with all the French people, so obviously it would be in French, and if I couldn't keep up with the conversation because there'd be lots of slang and lots of quick speaking, I'd just go to Lara and be like, help! And then we'd get by, and everyone in France, or at least where I was, was so patient and welcoming and understanding of the fact that I couldn't speak fluent French, but was trying. They appreciate that, so you never have to worry when you're attempting, because they'd much rather you attempt. That's what I found, so I had a nice experience. I think it probably would have been a lot more stressful if I was in a normal living environment, but because I was just living on a sweet campsite, on holiday, doing fitness and playing with kids, it was a lot easier getting into it. Mmm, were you scared being on your own in another country? This was actually the first time I'd ever gone properly abroad on my own. I think the weirdest thing was going to France on the train because when I was there, I almost didn't feel that I was abroad because I hadn't got on an actual plane. So it was a bit nerve wracking when I was traveling up on the train because I'd never gone on the underground in France and just normal stuff like that that you're so used to in England or at least for me in London. I sort of had to try and look around and find my way. I had a mask on, my glasses kept steaming up. Yeah, I got to the underground and every now and then I'd speak in French with someone and they would hear my accent and they would respond in English. That was in Paris, so you're normally okay in Paris because most people do speak English, at least the people that work there. But yeah, I was a bit nervous. I think the first few days, it's, it's just about settling in. I got to my mobile home and I was like, oh my God, I'm living here on my own. This is, this is cool, this is interesting. But it was not as over overwhelming as I thought it would be because it was on a lovely, cute, small campsite. I was with two sweet girls, we were just learning dances. So if you're wanting to try and ease into language learning, something like doing a summer job at a campsite is a really, really nice way of easing into it and the language and just the environment of it. What was the food like? Well, so good. That was from France, I've already explained that, the gorgeous hot chocolate cookie pieces, powder thing. I also have more stuff down here. People there knew how obsessed I was with certain foods that they actually gave me food to take home with me. 
Napolitan. Gorgeous. It's a cake with icing and oh, it sounds simple, but it's literally one of the best things I had there. What else did I love that was there? Oh my gosh. So they're more like pombes, but in a ghost shape. And they have ham and cheese flavor, ketchup flavor, barbecue flavor, and plain. The ketchup flavor and the barbecue. Oh, oh that's made me really want to order some. How could I not mention cheese when living in France? Local cheese was concoyote, which is a smooth, spreadable cheese. It's quite strong. It's so nice on a baguette. It was incredible. I was also introduced to comte, which we do have here. Um, oh, it was so, so, so nice. If you want to know more about the new things I learned in France, check out my vlog that I did of shopping in French. I go around a few supermarkets in, in France and I sort of show the different things that I've got used to and the different things I've enjoyed buying or enjoyed cooking with and things like that. So make sure you check that vlog out. It's in my mobile home, I didn't have an oven. I just had a microwave. So that sort of lowered the amount of stuff I could try but of the stuff that I did have, I was very, very satisfied. I also loved all their different salads. Do just like grated carrots, but with different sauces and loads of stuff like that. Check out my vlog. I don't want to have that one anymore. I want the funfetti one. Oh yeah. How was it with Corona? Mm. This is an interesting one because even though we did have all of the measures, because basically everything that I did was outside, it almost felt like for those two months I was just living in a normal world where corona didn't exist. It was really bizarre. We had all the measures, like whenever we'd go inside we would have to wear a mask. There were a few days where it rained, so we'd have to do the mini club with all the kids inside. On those days the kids wouldn't have to wear the mask, but the two animators that were there with the kids would. But that was easily sorted. For the mini disco, we would dance on stage. There'd be little crosses on the floor if people wanted to use them to show them the distance. It's an odd one because, especially at the beginning, because we were literally living in the middle of nowhere, people weren't that nervous by it. There would be parents and kids that when they were about to leave, they'd literally come up to me and give me a big hug and I'd be like, oh my God, okay. Ah. Um, and it happened so often. It made me feel more like I wasn't in the corona environment. Obviously I always remembered and most of the time I'd say to the kids, oh sorry I can't, but on the days when they were leaving, especially if they were with their parents and they all wanted to give me a cuddle, I'd be like, come on then. There wasn't one case because we were just in the absolute middle of nowhere. But all of the people that were really concerned always wore their masks, didn't come to the mini club, didn't take part in the activities. So you always knew the people that were more aware of it. Obviously I always try to keep my distance. We're animators, if someone falls and hurts themselves or cries, you can't just stay two meters away from them and be like, oh, you'll be fine. So it worked, it worked, we got through it. People I was with, I was living with, so all my close mates, we didn't have to social distance because we were constantly together, living together. The one thing that was different is normally we would have a karaoke evening, that's normally inside with the big screen, so we didn't have a karaoke evening this year. But it wasn't the end of the world. So yeah, coronavirus. It was annoying because I would love to have been able to properly be with the kids a bit more and not always worry. Like, I'd, I would love to just be like, yes, you can give me a card. So that was a shame. But we got through it and it worked. Mmm. Oh, I forgot how good the chocolate one was. Mmm. How did I find the job? The job was so awesome. I am obsessed with fitness. I adore kids. I'm obsessed with language learning and just being on stage as well. I've acted since the age of six. So it was just amazing. I also loved it because I knew I was getting fit because I was doing my Zumba, my yoga, my walks, dancing six days a week every evening. Towards the end, like the last few weeks, it got a bit repetitive. Um, but there's positives and negatives to that because if it was new stuff constantly, it would have been a bit more stressful and I would have been a bit more unsure of it, especially in a different language. It wasn't a problem for the, the customers because we have new people every week, but for us it was a bit repetitive. But that's your choice. For example, getting pied in the face every single week gets a bit repetitive. <laughs> but actually that was one of my favorite days. I'd always look forward to the show so much because we'd just have such a laugh all with each other on the stage. and everyone watching would always have a giggle as well, which was really, really nice to see. It took me back to my acting drama years, which I have missed 
being at uni. Just the fact that there was even the swimming pool and the water slides right by where I was living, the gorgeous lake, the canoes, the pedalos, the horses. It was just such a lovely environment and put together with the job, the fact that I was allowed to choreograph my own stuff and share it with all the customers and they actually came and enjoyed it. It was so, so lovely and being in the middle of nowhere meant the scenery was gorgeous. I saw a shooting star for the first time, which I was so shocked by and just loved every second of it. Because in England, you look up and if you see 10 stars, it's like, oh my gosh, 10 stars, woo! In France, where I was, the sky was filled. It was incredible. And one night I actually saw two shooting stars and I was like, where am I? Ah, oh, I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. Where are you going on your year abroad? So, I've obviously just got back from France. I'm going to Heidelberg in Germany to study at a university for six months. And after that, I'm heading to Peru for four months where I'm going to be a teaching assistant. I'm gonna be volunteering to teach English. Instead of being in a student environment, I'm gonna be living with two Latin American families, two months each. I don't know who they are yet, but I had to send a a video sort of explaining myself and introducing myself a few months ago so soon I should be getting told who the families could be and I'm gonna get to talk to them before meeting them I'm so so excited this is actually one of the questions the differences with corona I am a bit nervous about Peru I mean I shouldn't be because right now the situation in Latin America is really bad but I've got like 10 months till I'm meant to be going to Peru so I'm sure it'll be fine then but I might just in case try and enroll to Spanish university we'll see and the situation in Germany nowhere near as bad as what it is in England I'm still allowed to go a lot of the classes will be online which is a shame but you know it could be worse I'm still gonna have all my Erasmus group hopefully I'll still get to make those friends one thing I am sad about because I'm obsessed with fitness, I'm in a rugby team in Lancaster Uni. Because of Corona, they've cut all competitive sports teams. So I can do some sort of sport, I can go to the gym, but I can't do a sports team. It's gonna be a bit, a bit more different and I won't get to bond with as many classmates or chat to as many teachers properly. But we'll get we'll get by, it will be okay. And you guys will come along with me because I'm gonna be vlogging with my new camera too. So all will be good and I'm less nervous as well because my mum is coming with me to Germany to help me move in we're gonna buy all the stuff I need when I get there like the pots and pans and just all the decor for my room oh he's a nice just general one why did you choose to study languages um when I went to secondary school I studied French when I started in year seven and from then just loved it. I don't know quite what it was. I think I just found it really, really satisfying and enjoyable trying to speak another language and love the idea of just being able to understand more people. I've just always adored the idea of traveling. It actually mixes with the animator job. Ever since I was younger, when I would go on holiday and meet these animators that could speak six, seven languages, I was just amazed and I was so inspired by them. My next door neighbors, they've got three kids. They're so young and the parents are Russian and Polish. So they can already speak fluent English, Polish and Russian. They're gonna go to school and probably learn French and Spanish or something like that as well. So already at the age of like 15, they're gonna have five languages. I'm 20 and I just about have two, nearly four, but basically two, which is just incredible. And it motivates me and inspires me. Learning languages keeps my doors open. I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do as a job before going to uni. And languages is very broad. You can do quite a lot of things with languages. So it worked for me. Okay, this is gonna be my last bit. I can't believe it, I'm so stuffed. We're just gonna get through it. It's gonna have to happen. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh my God, I just found a white chocolate chunk. So good. Oh. Um, mm. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this weird cookie dough eating Q&A taste test for language students going on a year abroad. Please write more questions below. Germany is happening very soon, so please stay tuned. There you have it. Till next time, thank you for watching. Please make sure you subscribe, give this video a like, let me know what else you'd like to see, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Bye.